Good afternoon. When uh, John first called me on Tuesday and asked me to uh, give this talk, I had just given it on Monday to the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce Make It Monday Forum. And I presented with Michelle Brown, who's the President and CEO of United Way. And as many of you know, for the last seven years, United Way has championed a program called 90% by 2020, basically pushing the Anchorage School District graduation rate to 90% by the year 2020. And they have had some tremendous initial success. Over the last seven years, we've raised graduation rates from 59 to 72 percent, but the work still remains to be done. And the question is, how do we move forward? When I took this position uh, as president of the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce, uh, it, it, it brought with it some real opportunities. And one of the opportunities that I saw was for business to get back involved in the business of education. For far too long, the business community has expected politicians to solve the education problem, when in fact, they have made it worse. And when you look at education in Alaska, and when you look at education in Anchorage, there are certain reasons why the best educated workforce is essential. Look at some of these statistics. In Anchorage, housing is the 20th most expensive in the nation. Healthcare is the third most expensive in the nation. One and two are Juno and Fairbanks. Utilities, here in Anchorage we pay 40% higher for natural gas. Groceries are on average 30% higher. Totally, on average, the cost of living in Anchorage is 30% higher than cities our size elsewhere in the lower 48. So therein lies the biggest challenge, the economic challenge. Why the graduates from your schools and your school districts have to be the best have to be equipped with the school's skill sets to compete in the 21st economy, 21st century economy. And as I said, the problem is really been waiting too long for public policymakers to, to fix public education when in fact, as I said, they've just made it simply made it worse and more difficult. When you look at the role of the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce, there's a number of areas. Number one, in our annual surveys, education always ranks the highest as the top priority of, of our members. Having an educated workforce, always a top priority. So the question is, what is the state of education in Alaska? I would argue, as a former public policymaker, as a parent of two Anchorage School District children, uh, as a, a father, a business owner, now the president of the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce, I would argue that education is good, but it could be better. And the challenge is, is that for far too long, the only thing we hear in the public arena is how bad our public schools are. And this doesn't even mesh with reality. Nowhere have you heard, nowhere have you heard that our students rank above the national average with SATs and ACTs. Nowhere have you heard that the Anchorage School District's eighth grade reading and math NAEP scores are above national average. Nowhere have you heard that 88% of parents would recommend their child's school. 88% approval rating. Show me a politician with 88% approval rating. <laughs> but this is the challenge that we're at as a community, as a state, as a nation. We can no longer leave education to fend for itself. We can no longer allow the vacuum to be filled with it's the teachers' union's fault. It's the school's fault. It's everybody but the parents' fault. That doesn't work anymore, especially when you consider how complex public education has become today. When you look at public education, when I look at the Anchorage School District as a business, this is what I see. I see 48,000 students. I see 14% needing special education, additional resources and investment. I see 4% homeless, nowhere to sleep at night, surfing from couch to couch. I see 26% transient, moving at least once during a school year. If I was an employer and had that in my workforce, how could I possibly manage? So how can we as a society expect you to teach when you have students that A, either don't show up or show up hungry from dysfunctional families or simply are in a transient family. I mean, look, I can tell you right now, you can have the best teacher, the best CEO, the best president, but if your students or your employees don't show up for work, 
How do you get results from that? So the question is, what do we do? How do we go forward? How do we break this gridlock? The business community has to get involved, and that's what we're doing. Over the last four years, Governor Parnell has said one thing, and he said one thing very clear. He doesn't like what's coming out of the public education system, so he's not going to fund it. Well, okay. <laughs> but over the last four years, how many initiatives have there been to improve student performance? How many initiatives have there been to understand the changing dynamic of the student population and their interaction and what represents a comprehensive education and ready to learn? How many initiatives, how many studies have been done? None. So what we've done for the last four years, if we simply stood up, our policymakers have simply stood up and said, we don't like what's happening, so we're going to ignore it. I'm sorry, but that's not how you run a school. That's not how you run a state. And it's certainly not how you run a company. So what do we need to do? We need to get involved. The business community, the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce, along with the United Way, are leveraging our 1,000 members and 54,000 employees of those, those member companies to find out what is graduation ready? What do employers think is, is, is graduation ready? What do you call success when they graduate? Whether they want to walk into your doors out of high school or whether they're going to walk into the doors of a college admission officer. What is success? Success to us, graduation ready, is fully qualified in the eyes of an employer or college admission officer. For far too long, the business community has simply said, you know what, kids aren't qualified. They don't graduate, they don't have the skill sets. All right, great, but what does that mean? I've heard that for years, but what does that mean? Define that for me. So that's what the business community is going to do. And we're going to work with groups like a United Way of Anchorage, and we're going to get in, and we're going to do the heavy lifting. We're going to talk to HR departments and some of our larger companies and see what they're seeing. We're going to work with the school district and their career path opportunities and, and, and see what they're doing and how we can leverage our ability. And I said this on Monday. When I was in the private sector, you'd go to work every day, and on my way to the office, I'd have a checklist in my head, and I'd think, okay, I'm going to take care of this, this, and this today. But you know, when you run a nonprofit like the Anchorage Chamber, you can't do that because you're limited. You can only do what you can do. But if groups like the Anchorage Chamber and the Alaska State Chamber and the Fairbanks Chamber and the Wasilla Chamber and all of the chambers recognize that it's time for business to get back involved in the business of education, we all can do our little part which will lift everybody up. Individually, we can't solve education's problems, but collectively, we certainly can. How do we do that? We have to address the areas of readiness, and readiness isn't just academic readiness. As I said, the Anchorage School District's SAT and ATC, ACT scores are great. They're above, above national average. So the top 25% of the kids, they're doing fine. Getting a good education, getting into the best colleges in the country. My daughters are a perfect example. I was telling John, it was 10 years ago I spoke to this same group at the Hilton 10 years ago in 2003. My daughter Alyssa was in seventh grade at Central Middle School. And on the Saturday I spoke to this group, at that same time she was taking her SATs as a seventh grader. And she went to Northern Lights and she went to Central Middle School and she ended up graduating from West High School in the International Baccalaureate program. She got into one of the top colleges in the country. And not only did she get accepted to one of the top colleges in the country, but her IB program, the curriculum that she did at West High, gave her a year's worth of college credits the first day she entered school. She graduated a semester early. And I'm not kidding you when I sat down and figured out how much money that saved me. <laughs> and it's not because of me. It's because of the work you do. By the time a student graduates high school, they have spent almost 15% of their life in a classroom. It can't be just all your responsibility. It has to be a shared responsibility. So again, how do we do this? We engage business, we engage labor, we engage higher education officials and determine what their readiness is. What are they seeing on the streets? What are kids graduating with? What are some of the challenges? We need to define these metrics for areas of readiness. This is already happening. These metrics have already been chosen. Now, what we need to do is we need to begin an ongoing conversation with the business and education community to monitor outcomes. How are we doing? Do they need to be tweaked? You know, 
the challenge is in today's world, it seems like the more complex problems get, the more simpler the solutions seem to be bandied about. I mean, today when you look at the, the, the demographics of the school district, I know locally here over the last 10 years, they've shifted dramatically. You have a whole new student population, a whole new set of challenges. And lawmakers have responded by doing exactly the opposite. Instead of looking at a public institution that educates almost 94% of the students in this state, we're talking about weakening it. We're talking about changing the Constitution to allow pr public dollars to, pri to, to, to go to pu pri private schools. So tell me how shifting funds to 6% of the student population benefits 94%. It doesn't. And school choice or vouchers or whatever you want to call it doesn't help the fact that there's a lot of families out there with a lot of complex problems that impact the graduation rate and impact test scores and impact students' longevity. Students that have to stay home to take care of a sibling because their parents are working. Students that have to stay home because their parents are sick or hungover or drunk or not home. I mean, this is the real world we live in. And the business community sees this every day. And we need to get active, and we need to help solve the problem. Once we get active, as we are now, once we start getting in and doing the heavy lifting, then we need to have a conversation about this. Because it's about time that the business community stands up and says, look, you're talking about 90% of our workforce coming out of high school. Why are we funding this? Why are we making librarians turn to the internet to raise money for pencils? I mean, look, I mean, I'm not being patronizing. I'm being totally honest. Why are we doing that? For the last five years, we've basically been flat funded. I mean, basically what policymakers have said, you know what, we don't like what you're doing, but so we're not going to give you any more money, and the money we do give you, well, we're going to have all kinds of strings tied to it, so you really won't be able to use that that much. That's not the way you fix education. The way you fix education isn't walking away from it. It's getting engaged. It's walking towards it. It's saying, how can I help, rather than saying, what have you done for me lately? That's what we need to do as a business community, and that's what we'll do. Because when we start doing the heavy lifting, and start showing improvement in these numbers, the business community will become your, busy, your, your, your best advocates for increased funding. It is time for all of us to pull together. It really is. It's time for the business community. It's time for public policymakers. It's time for all of us to look at public schools and say, this is a, this is a challenge. This is an investment. This is an effort that demands all of us pull together and work towards creating the best graduates we can. These boom and bust funding cycles that we've been through cannot continue. You cannot create a consistent, high quality education product when you don't know year to year whether you're gonna get funded or to go three or four years in a row without any increase to the base student allocation. That simply doesn't work. And from a business owner, whose family still owns a large company here and now is the president of the Anchorage Chamber, this last legislative session, I was incredibly frustrated. We had two lawmakers elected this year, freshman lawmakers, both with significant education, public education background. And what was the first thing they did after they got elected? It wasn't launching an initiative to strengthen public education. It wasn't a discussion about how we improve public schools. It was introducing a constitutional amendment to send public dollars to private schools. That was their first response as freshman lawmakers. Let's not even look at the public school system. Let's just go right to vouchers. That's poor public policy making. And not only does it shortchange 90% of the students that go to public schools in this state, but it shortchanges the business community that depends on those 90% to fill all of our positions. So it's just something to think about. And I want to say personally, you know, 
I, I grew up, as I said, I grew up, I went to Lake Otis, Wendler, graduated from East. I was a PTA president at Gladys Wood. I mean, I love the public school system. Let me tell you about Anchorage School District. My daughter in fourth grade, her teacher, my daughter Lauren at fourth grade at Gladys Wood Elementary, her teacher was Ed Graff. It was his first year. And now he's the school superintendent. Her daughter, and her, her, my daughter's teacher in fifth grade was Mike Hanley. And today Mike Hanley is the commissioner of education. I mean, my kids got a fabulous education. And right now, my kids are grown, out of school. Now it's my turn to invest in the future for my neighbor's children. And it's my turn, in my role as the president of the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce, to gather the business community together and say, look, this isn't working because we've been trusting something way too important with the wrong people. Education. <laughs> instruction is not improved by ideology. Instruction is improved by good teachers, good community support, and public policymakers that understand a changing education demographic. The world's getting more complex, educating kids is getting more difficult, and that means more hands on deck. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate what you do. The Anchorage Chamber of Commerce appreciates what you do. Thank you for what you do, and in the future, we are going to be there by your side, helping you improve education and demanding the respect that you deserve. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you.